That well, was a weird movie. <laughs> <laughs> what even happened? I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me. So this was a. S how long was the process of making this film? It looks like a six plus year journey, or around there. It was like. Um, so I did it like more than full time. It was like my existence for four years. I started in 2018. Mm -hmm. And it was the culmination of a bunch of other projects that I didn't do or like did and wanted to like fix. Um, but I wrote like a music video idea and then a film. And I was like, I'll just make a feature because that's where I want everything to lead anyway. And, um, and it happened and I just kept going. And yeah, so the animation was four years roughly and then I finished in um, the glip I I don't know what happened at the end there but basically it was showing that you know I started and like the breakup happened in 2016 and then um, I finished the movie in like 2022 and it was like you know a long process of um, processing emotions and yeah what was your question? No, that was my, you answered it. <laughs> but the reason I asked that is I, I just wonder what it's like to spend so much time. It's not fun, <laughs> dude. It sucks. I mean, like. I don't want to do that again. Yeah. <laughs> so someone please give me a lot of money to make a movie, <laughs> another <laughs> movie, because I made that all myself. Um, and I went, I went down a black hole. I feel like. I, this is probably true for everyone. Life is just a series of being kind of okay and then deep. I've, I think I'm just seriously depressed, but being in a deep pit. Does anybody else experience that? Okay, good. It's a, thank you. I love your short, by the way. We'll talk after. Um, so this, is, this was the first experience I ever had of like, you know, unconditional love, like this, um, my first relationship. It wasn't even that long, you know, four to six months or something. And I blew it up and realized I was totally emotionally unavailable and didn't know how to exist in the world because of, you know, my childhood or whatever. Relatable. Circumstances. I'm Thank sure you. a lot of people. Um, why is the world like how it is? Am I right? Oof. Um, right, Dimitri? A amen, brother. Thank you. Um, so then uh, I was like, I have to process this somehow, and I also have to, like, further my career somehow because, um, like, you're all in this business, nobody gives you anything. It's depressing as hell, and nobody cares about you. <laughs> so you're just like, I have to do everything myself. So I was like, I guess I'll just go for it. And um, yeah, so that's why I spent so much time and concentration, because I was like, it's I can think of how to accomplish anything. Yeah. You know? I, am, I am incredibly impressed that you were able to do that, though, and like that you were able to take all that, the, the introspection and how do I put this? Every time I attempt a project, I never like I can never commit to like the perspective of it. For you know, like if I conceive of something like this, there's no way I'm gonna like like follow through. No, yeah, but because the the perspective that I'm making it from uh -huh. won't last for like right. six years. So yeah. the fact that you're able to like, and then you have to animate yourself. Yeah. That's wild to Well, like. it was an exercise. Like, the reason I made myself the main character was not, I mean, I like acting, but it wasn't like, you know, I want to put myself in the movie and make myself the main character and um, be in the next Star Wars movie. But <laughs> I was like, well, first of all, it's easier to record yourself, especially during the pandemic, so I could just, you know, anytime I needed a line. And then I was like, I have to learn to love myself if I'm going to look at myself for five years and, like, relive all these terrible feelings and like experiences and it's so like you know I'm not there where it was like totally worth it dudes but like <laughs> you know I've gotten a lot <laughs> from it and um, I can see it leading places it's a slow process um, but yeah I totally I get what you're saying for me it was yeah an exercise of like if I give up on this it means I hate myself which I don't want to accept so I'm going to keep going and yeah i which is weird because I, I watch this and it's different every time because i've watched it with people like you know seven times at this point i think and like um like this character it's like my internal monologue and you know how i seem how, how i seem to other people and i think it's yeah it's just interesting it's like what i needed to make you know and i hope other people relate to it 
and I'm thankful I have like such a good cast and Dimitri who did the score, which is the best <laughs> movie score. You know, not, not just because that's my movie, <laughs> yeah. but like Dimitri has been on since the very beginning, and um, I did the first two minutes of this as like a test to see if I could like make something that I liked. And Dimitri, um, we had just met each other, and I was like, "Do you want to score this and then see where it goes?" Right? Yeah. Yeah, we actually met at Show and Tell. Yeah. Uh, that's a real thing, Show and Tell. Uh, we just really hit it off, and I thought Matt had an amazing kind of vision just right away, you know. And um, Matt sent me some footage from the movie. It was just this thing that I'm working on, and it was the very beginning, and wrote this really sad piece because it's a really sad scene. No idea where the film was going to go. Did I not tell you at all? I don't remember. No, you didn't tell me anything. And so I, I mean... I thought it was maybe going to be a really sad movie, which I was all in for. But um, one of the things I love about working with Matt is that you get the whole spectrum of emotions and styles, but there's this really solid through line because there's a real vision there, which is amazing. Um, that's what you, you hope to work for uh, as a composer. And I love all kinds of different styles of music. That's partially why I came into film music rather than writing songs, whatever I wanted to try all kinds of stuff, and this film <laughs> really did that, because there's different styles going on all the time, and there's wildly different emotions from deeply personal to just silly jumping around, all kinds of you know butterflies flying around in the air that you have to follow the story and follow the emotions, and that was a really exciting challenge as a composer. Yeah, um, I wouldn't want anyone else. Yeah, Not even John Williams. John. Anyone in the audience have questions? Yeah, I, um, I have a friend who was not only a journalist and live action, but like he talked about animation and the form and like the amount of like imagery and thought that went mm -hmm. into like how that was really like articulated and kind of explored here. Like, I mean, it's just so wild. Like, that can definitely come Thank you. Like, yeah, it's really is a gorgeous film. I mean, Thanks. Oh, wow. I appreciate yeah, that. It's like in particular, I didn't know if you knew that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, good question. Um, so it was uh, a, a total mess. I like, because I did it all myself, I hate storyboarding and I hate like the traditional process. I think it's, it's soul sucking and that's why I don't work at a studio. I mean, I would if someone wants to hire me at this point. <laughs> but so I just jumped in and I started animating. So I did the first two minutes and then I was like, you know, I want it to be about this thing, and um, so I brought on, uh, or my, my producing partner, Neil Gargiulo, who was like in, invaluable in this project and helped so much. Um, I was like, I'm gonna make this movie, and I have to follow like my inspiration in every moment. So I feel like animating this thing today and this other thing today, so I basically, we were working on the script at the same time as I was just animating things, and then we were kind of matching it together, and then we did a shot list that we knocked out with like different colors, and, and <laughs> like this shot's done, this shot's almost done, and, like we need to add this shot in, this needs to be recorded. It was just like a whole like crazy, like I would, I would look <laughs> like, you know, on uh, one of those crime shows on Netflix, my wall, but it was thankfully all digital, so you couldn't see the, the mess. Um, what was your question? I <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, with the process! <laughs> it was crazy. Um, so a lot of it was me animating things because I felt like it, because I was really depressed and I just like animating to an extent. You know, like jumping in and making things look fun. So the dream sequences, I just animated those without knowing where they were gonna go. And then me and my producing partner were like, oh, it could be like the breakup and the actual dreams. So then we did voiceovers with Michelle Trachtenberg and um, it c I think it fit in really well. And same with like a lot of the action sequences. I didn't know where they were going to la land. And then I uh, put them into the script. And then I also updated the style a lot over the years because I just got better and I like wanted to replace things. It was just a mishmash of like getting it done, you know, yeah. which is like every project you do. You, you don't have to follow any steps as long as you get it done, you know, which sometimes it's 
better for it, sometimes it's worse for it, but you know, you get it done. Thank you. I do. Yeah, like the painted one. Yeah. Um, I think that's more of a feeling thing of like, um, I want to mix, I just like mixing styles. It's more fun for me. And I, that's really what it is, is I, I just, it's more fun. And I don't like staying on model, is, but you have to, like for efficiency and for people to understand what's going on. So any moment that I can like do a little aside joke that's weird or like play with the face or anything like that, especially in the um, the fantasy world, there's a lot of like morphing and style changing, whereas in the real world it's pretty consistent. Um, but I just I think I just wanted to paint that, and I think people, I think everyone likes those animated sequences that show like the close up painting, like. Everyone always loves those in, you know, cartoons from the 90s or whatever. So I just thought it'd be cool. Um, yeah, just a feeling thing. Yes. Yeah, that is definitely. Oh, sorry. sorry. No, no, but is my question like, is yeah. that your truth? Or is that what you think the show is? Right. That's a really good question because it's kind of both. I think that breakup definitely. I mean, I've been over that for years at this point. Um, like, yeah, the, the glitchy part at the end was like film, film in 2016, like having a breakdown, like in the middle of it. Um, and yeah, I mean, time, like, obviously that was like, you know, eight years ago or whatever. Um, but I'm definitely not in, yeah, I think it was true resolution in that point in my life, like, of finding things in my life and awakening to things of, like, oh, I can be happy, I can feel good. Like, that's kind of the resolution, is being, like, oh, I have had good moments. I know I have good things in my life. I you know I have things to look forward to. And it's definitely not the resolution of, like, I'm good now. It's just the resolution of, the first kind of step, you know, in the right direction of like opening that door and that's what the, you know, that world is supposed to kind of symbolize to, you know, it is a bunch of different things, but um, just an, an awakening. Um, Cause I think, I mean, I, I had that very specifically and I, I think a lot of people have that very specifically too of when you first realize that you're miserable or you don't know how to live or you weren't trained to be emotionally intelligent or happy and you're like, I gotta do something about this, or not, you know. And just to add, I think people are really freaked out when they like when they start to fall in love with their romantic emotions. Um, there was a scene that I think Mark said in the book about the girl and the guy being romantic. Mm -hmm. And I think that is really beautiful and I think that you should like keep posting those moments. Thank you, that's great. Um, so I like that your show kind of honors those that are like having those moments. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, I think we all go through a similar awakening like this, and I haven't seen it told in many films. I think, it, I mean, it is, but, like, I think it's a very personal thing to a lot of people that we don't talk about, or we do to an extent. So I wanted to, like, tell mine as honest as possible so people could, like, connect to it, connect to it in the way that they will. You know, for there's... I think we all have similar patterns of, you know, finding love or people in our lives. Uh, to relate to each other with. Thank you. Uh, I just found your show very funny and amazing, and I would have probably have cried a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that so much. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Uh, we got new questions in here, so I'll just give you a question very quickly. And then I'll start oh, yeah? Dude, I have not seen those. I don't know. I've not seen My Little Pony. I've not seen Care Bears. I don't know anything from that world. I'll throw eggs right now. I'm going to throw eggs. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, I mean, mine are just the tradition, the typical like, well, not typical. I mean, I like SpongeBob, Courage, the Cowardly Dog. Um, so I mean, too many. There's like so many, and a lot of it, you know, anime too. I tried to mix like anime with '90s cartoons. Um, yeah, I I think for this it wasn't anything specific. I think. Um, yeah, I don't know. So, so many, like, I can't even. I, I, it's like one of those questions where there's so many I can't even think of specific ones. But yeah, of course, like SpongeBob and the whole Nickelodeon uh, Nicktoons era was really inspirational. But not a lot of, not a lot of, not a lot of, um, yeah, colorful cartoons that this is similar to, other than like anime. There's a lot of like, you know, cute characters and like the peanut butter sparkle character is very anime inspired, obviously. And uh, Dimitri did a great job with that that score. We talked about that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Got Dimitri into anime over that score. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I didn't. I Ma <laughs> Matt's like, so I want the sequence to be very anime, and I was like, okay, I'm. I know some anime, like Dragon Ball Z. He's like, no. <laughs> 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 and so I had to. I had to learn anime. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> it's uh, but yeah, I mean. It was funny what you were saying earlier about like staying focused on the same thing for six years because I was amazed by it too. Because I would be working on like lots of other projects in between this, and then we would come back to this and kind of work on it in like spurts. And Matt would send me like like the first thing Matt sent me was this one beginning scene, and then we actually did the cartoon that Matt shows at the show and tell like the cartoon within the cartoon. And then we just started doing random scenes and he would just send me stuff and I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> Matt's like, just do this. I'm like, that's okay, I'm sure, this is incredible. And it was, just, it was really fun to watch it evolve as it went along yeah, because. Yeah, what was it like not knowing the whole story when you were working on it? Yeah, well you gave me the script early on. So I read the script and I kind of um, had an idea of where it was going, but that changed a lot seemed and um, it was uh, it was just I what I did was I wrote themes for all the different characters and set that I really um, felt resonated just from a melodic sense with those characters and settings and then um, as things changed different genres or different complete settings of those themes so you hear some themes in like a classical setting and later you'll hear it in almost like a I don't know, cute techno anime style <laughs> again, and like all these different themes that stayed true to the characters throughout the whole process got morphed as the stories morphed for the characters. Can you talk to me about the humor? I especially love the humor in like the real world of mm -hmm. LA. Yeah. The with the yoga and the uh -huh. pickle co coffee. Is that a coffee shop that serves pickles? What is? No. <laughs> The pickle was made up, I'm sorry to say. But um, me and Seth Ward, who is like one of my best friends in mm -hmm. real life, I like tried to, um, we have a very like, we used to go to coffee shops a lot and like just talk about our emotions and stuff. And we have different ways of processing emotions, which I played up a lot. Like we get along, like he's an emotionally intelligent guy and I like obviously made him, you know, a bit sillier in this, but I tried to take him and. Um, I mean, he went along with playing himself in this film, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, but yeah, he's he's down to do anything. But I appreciate that. Yeah, it was yeah, it was fun finding those. It was like the actors, like Katie Leclaire mm -hmm. who played and Brett Davern who played the yoga instructors, yeah. were so funny. Um, this yeah. is every time I've tried yoga, it was kind of like that. So I really <laughs> appreciate. I'm it. glad people relate to that because when I was doing that, I was like, is that too niche of a thing? To, but it was like really important to me, and I I wanted to showcase that, and I feel yeah. like people, uh, uh, most people have done that, even though it seems like out there. But enough people have like tried it at least. Definitely. To get that that yeah. feeling of, you know, am I doing this right? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Well, where can people find you, follow you, support the project? Yeah, I'm um, uh, online. My Instagram and everything is Maddie Keel, um, just at whatever. And then Unicorn Boy online. And I mean, yeah, just. Tell people about it, I guess. I don't know. Trying to get get the tell word out friends, there. Tell, tell your, your friends. Tell your friends, Unicorn Boy. You saw it here, yeah. and it's amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here tonight, Thanks, and uh, have a good it. night. Thank of course. You. My pleasure. Thanks so much. <laughs>